Hello and welcome to another Kangaroo English Daily Digest. My name is Christian and today is Tuesday, best day of the week. Um, I'm super excited about today's Daily Digest. Today I am going to show you the secret to perfect English pronunciation. But before I do that, I need to start with a joke, okay? So, there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's two whales sitting in a bar, okay? And one whale turns to the other whale and says, Ooh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And, and, and the second whale turns to the first whale and says, Go home, Frank. You're drunk. <laughs> now, 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 this is completely relevant to, to what I'm going to be talking about today. I, I promise. Okay, so we need to start by talking about something called abugidas. Okay, so a lot of... Asian and Indian subcontinent languages are abugidas, like for example Vietnamese and also Thai. Now, maybe you think that all alphabets or writing systems work in a similar way, but some writing systems are really different and interesting, and the difference between and uh, uh, like the Latin alphabet that we use in English and, and an abugida is that abugidas only write consonants and the vowels are indicated by, by little optional marks. So for example, in Thai you have the first consonant letter looks a little bit sort of like this, okay? This is called kokai. I'm sorry, my, my Thai tones are not very good. Kokai, which means chicken, right? And so this, this, this consonant represents k, k. And here's the interesting thing. So in Thai, like a lot of languages, the consonant automatically comes with a vowel. And the, the vowel that it automatically comes with is like a neutral kind of er uh sound, right? Uh. Now, if we want to change the vowel, what we do is we add uh, an extra mark called a diacritical. So if we add one that looks a little bit like a whale, like this, on top, then it changes the vowel sound to E. So now instead of being ko, it becomes ki. So now this is ki. So we have like a consonant with a vowel automatically, you know, kind of indicated by one single letter. And that's called an abugida. Okay, fine. Now, let's move on to a slightly different type of alphabet, which is called an abjad. So abjads are used, for example, by lots of Middle Eastern languages, including Arabic. And it works in a sort of similar way, but the difference in the difference between an abugida and an abjad is that in an abjad, you can indicate vowels if you want, but they're optional, okay? So, for example, if I write the Arabic letter uh, shin, which looks a bit like this, okay? So you have these little lines and then a big one, okay? With the three dots, okay? So this is shin. So the sound it represents is sh. sh. <laughs> and again, what we can do is we can add a diacritical mark. We can add a thing called a uh, Haman, okay, which looks a little bit like this. It's not a brilliant, uh, not a brilliant, um, not a brilliant uh, one. But, but by adding this mark, that tells me that the vowel is a certain vowel. So this this mark here represents the sound oo. So now this becomes shoo. Okay. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why am I telling you about abugidas and abjads and consonants with automatic vowels because it's the same in Arabic. You have this consonant that automatically comes with a vowel, right? Because I'm about to propose a theory 
I'm about to propose a theory that's very controversial, <laughs> that I invented myself. And that is that in reality, English is an abjad. And by realizing that English is actually an abjad, then that helps you to really understand English pronunciation. Let me tell you what I mean, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you what I mean. So, here I have, here I have a, a sentence from a very famous uh, children's story about the grasshopper. So, you can see, a grasshopper spent the summer hopping about in the sun and singing to his heart's content, etc., etc., right? Now, let's have a look what this story looks like if we remove all of the consonants. It looks like this. Okay, it's the same story, and all I did was I eliminated the consonants and I left the vowels. Right? It's like... <laughs> just, just like my whale joke, right? Oh my god, I actually, look, I forgot a consonant, I'm an idiot. Okay, so... And as you can see, by only leaving vowels, it becomes garbled. And that is today's word of the day. Garble. Garble means a message, you know, a piece of information. So that could be text information or visual information or audio information. A piece of information that's all mixed up or confused. So maybe you're listening to some, some radio and you're like, man, I can't understand it. The audio's all garbled. Or maybe the letters are all in the wrong order. It's garbled. And this basically turns into garbled nonsense. But... But, if I do the same thing, and instead of eliminating consonants, if I eliminate the vowels, I can still read it. I can still read the damn thing. Look. Now, I need to leave the letter A. And the reason is that the letter A is an article. Okay, it's an article. And interestingly, this is almost the same as Arabic, because in Arabic, they do have the, the first character of the alphabet, which is Alif, which is basically like a vowel. It is a vowel, and they need it for the same reason that we need it in English, okay? So, actually, uh, Arabic is a false abjad. But anyway, that's not the point. So, you can see I can read it. A grasshopper spent the summer hopping about the sun and sun. Okay, so I can read it, okay? Now, why am I telling you this? Because if you look at American pronunciation and British pronunciation, and then you look inside those countries. If you look at the difference between New York pronunciation and Texas pronunciation, or you look at the difference between London and, and, and Manchester pronunciation, or even Australian and South African, the difference is not in the consonants. We need the consonants in English. To, to understand our message. Now, this is not true for all languages, it's true for English. And the, the research by Jennifer Jenkins, her English as a lingua franca, showed that you need to know all the consonants, but the vowels, ah, the vowels can be what basically whatever you want, as long as they are consistent. And so if you look at the differences between say, American English and British English, the difference is the vowels. You know, it's not in the consonants. They're not changing consonants, they're changing vowels. So, you know, in America, it's car. It's like, ah, uh, you know, ah. Uh, and, and in Britain, it's ah. Uh. But you still need the k at the beginning. So what I'm saying is, if you want perfect English pronunciation, okay, if you want to be understood by as many people as possible, you need to become obsessed with consonants and just make your vowels consistent. And you need to treat English more like Arabic than, than English. <laughs> anyway, I hope that I, I probably went beyond my limits as a, as a phonetics teacher. But I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Digest and I hope it helps you to just become awesome at pronunciation. I'll see you in class. <laughs>